Hello again, I am a travel weary blunty sitting in a hotel room in Los Angeles in the USA for a thing that I can hopefully tell you about sooner rather than later because this non-disclosure agreement is driving me up the wall a bit. I want to be able to tell you why I'm here. Anyway, so with the launch of the Ryzen series CPUs, things got a lot more interesting for system builders out there and in particular streamers with Ryzen's high core count and high thread counts doing wonderful things for multitasking workloads like streaming. And recently I did a series of videos on uh, the Ryzen 5 family of CPUs and how they deal with various streaming workloads. Well, as of today, the Ryzen 3 series chips are finally available. I mean, really looking forward to these. The, the budget level chips, the most affordable level chips, the ridiculously good value chips, supposedly, on paper at least, but Unfortunately, the launch of the Ryzen 3 chips and the review samples that arrived on my door happened in a very small window of just a couple of days between my Taipei trip and this LA trip, so I only had a very small amount of time to play around with them so far. There will be more coming, but for right now, I did get a chance to run it through some of the streaming tests that I recently put the Ryzen 5 series of chips through to see how they measure up there and figure out if the Ryzen 3 is a practical and workable solution for a budget-priced streaming rig. So let's find out just how much you can squeeze out of these Ryzen 3 trips when it comes to being a Twitch streamer. I was sent review samples for both Ryzen 3 variants, the Ryzen 1200 and the Ryzen 1300X. Both are 4-core, four 4-thread four CPUs, both are overclockable, both have a 65-watt TDP, and the central difference between them really only being, much like the 1600 and 1600X from the Ryzen 5 family, the 1300X has higher clock speeds. In this video, I'll be focusing on the 1300X and using the well-optimized Overwatch as my test platform. Otherwise, the test system specs are identical to what I used for all the Ryzen 5 tests that I did. And like I said, while I am focusing on Overwatch, I did test Watch Dogs 2, which I used in my Ryzen 5 tests, the CPU hog game that is. But long story short, while the game would run okay or run its lonesome, it didn't go very well in any configuration I tried, thanks to the limited core count, when it came to the streaming setups. But we'll circle back to that in a minute. Meanwhile though, if what you're trying to do is get a streaming rig up and running on a budget, I'd still recommend trying to stretch the budget for a Ryzen 5. You'll be better off. You get double the threads, for instance. But that said, AMD's most affordable Ryzen family members here do remarkably well. And once I get back from my travels, I'll be putting these tests up against my similarly spec Intel i3 rig for you for a comparison video. But official prediction, based on what I've already seen my i3 rig do, AMD are going to very easily be the better choice for tight budget rigs at the lower end. In the most aggressive test setup, the 1080p 60 frames per second stream with the game running windowed 900p to leave room for seeing what OBS is up to and in a real world scenario having the Twitch chat and other handy stuff up beside the game. And although all the calls are pretty much pegged flat, the stream ran great and the game surprisingly still ran very close to those baseline game only tests. Even with Overwatch in Ultra settings, it was still in a very playable window almost always above 60 frames per second, spending a lot of time in the low 70s. And the stream output was clean, it was smooth, and basically all you could want from a 1080p 60 frames per second stream using Twitch's maximum permissible bitrate. Dropping down the stream frame rate to 30 frames per second, but keeping it at 1080p opens up just enough breathing room to keep the CPU calls from being now to 100% utilization, which lets the gameplay ramp its own frame rate up to a lovely and smooth, and much better for Overwatch gameplay, 80 to 90 frames per second. Rolling down to a 720p 60 frames per second stream, one of the most common configurations for many streamers out there who like to balance a high frame rate with 720p resolution to leave more room in the bitrate to keep the stream looking a little freer from compression artifacting. And much like the 1080p 60 frames per second configuration, the CPU cores are basically pegged out the whole time here, but even so, there's just enough room for the stream to keep up without dropping so much as a single frame, and the gameplay hovers around that 70 frames per second mark. And of course, if you cut down from that, 720p 30 frames per second is no problem also. So the takeaway here is that for a low-end, tight-budget rig that you're hoping not only to game on, but also kick off your hopes and dreams to be a Twitch streamer, the Ryzen 3 CPUs are gonna get you there. And with the Ryzen 3 1300X retailing in Australia for 175 Aussie dollar redos, while its little brother costs just 150 Aussie dollar redos, or 129 and 109 Trump bucks here in the States, they make ridiculously good value. Come here and get stabilized. 
But circling back to that wall I hit with Watch Dogs 2, that does mean, of course, that certain PC games that are not very well optimized, that are CPU hogs like Watch Dogs 2, are going to cause you some issues when it comes to streaming those on a rig like this. You can work around it by dropping some settings down and trying to free up some CPU resources in other ways, but you know that is that is sort of the area where you hit uh, that, that, that compromise, where you start having to turn things down, which is not the ideal solution, but it can be done. But depending on what you're streaming PC gaming wise with highly optimized things like Overwatch for example, it's going to do excellently as I've just shown you. Also going to be a great rig if what you want to do is stream console gameplay by using a capture device of some variety. Also handy to build a budget secondary rig to take all of the streaming load off your main PC gaming rig. Point I'm trying to drive at here is there are several different ways to slice it and in all of them the Ryzen 3 does an amazing job considering the price you're paying for the damn thing. And I'm looking forward to digging around in a little bit further once I get home from all my travels and stuff to see what else it can do. But yeah, it's looking promising and um, <laughs> like I said in the opening, official prediction, Intel's uh, you know, budget rigs, you know, they're, they're all cheapy Pentiums and their i3s and stuff, they're, um, <sighs> they're, just, they're just not going to be competitive. But thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time. Hopefully, the next few videos you'll be seeing are, are videos about why the hell I'm in Los Angeles in the first place.